Hello, my name is Orkumar Devedi and this video is part of my Indian Economy and Policy course submission. We all listen to economics pundits and professors talking about India in a Panglosian continent and they say that India is a sleeping giant, India is going to overtake USA by 2050 and India is going to be uh, a superpower in future. But all of these are a future, it's a future target for India. Will India be able to achieve its target is, is a and and do justice with its potential it's it's only on china is going to tell us right uh, i'm going to talk about indian labor and land reforms that our government is planning to come up with come up with uh, india is facing big uh, tax of uh, task of re replacing its archaic labor laws which date back as late as 1926 Uh, so India currently have some around 44 labor laws which are part of Industrial Dispute Act 1947, uh, the Trade Union Act 1926, the Industrial Employment Act 1946. What government is trying to do is to come up with the, or combine uh, all these 44 laws into four codes. These codes will to some extent simplify the labor laws that are available that are there in the uh, industry to be followed by. So these four codes will be wage code, uh, industrial relations code, social security code, industrial safety and welfare code. So these are four codes in, in which all these uh, 44 laws will be combined or uh, in uh, in other way you can say uh, government is what government is trying to do is there are some around 1700 of label uh, minimum wage laws so what government is trying uh, is because its uh, labor laws are part of concurrent list that's why all the states can make laws regarding uh, labor uh, specific to labor laws why this labor law reform is needed as of now what is the necessity of these reforms the first uh, reason is the welfare of labors the, the concerns of the labors per se and the second one is the concerns of the corporate the major concerns of labors are their wages their union uh, issues related to unionism issues related to uh, social security uh, employment security these four are the major concerns of labors apart from this uh, the concerns of corporate uh, people is uh, these labor laws these archaic labor laws make it difficult to hire and fire laborers and also the, uh, the the type of labor that are available in the market are less skilled and that makes very uh, difficult if they are not able to hire and fire them effectively it becomes very a complicated business uh, altogether to deal with all these problems the government has come up with the is coming up with the this uh, the industrial relations code and uh, this will codify the entire labor laws that are available in the country so these four codes, as I've already talked about them, that uh, these codes are wage code, industrial relation code, and social security code, industrial safety and welfare codes. This will simplify the uh, entire labor laws and makes it easier for uh, companies and businesses to hire uh, not a permanent laborers or permanent uh, workers, rather than they can come up with the, you know, they can hire workers on contract basis easily. It becomes very easy to hire uh, labors based on contract. So that is very uh, beneficial for the for the organizations. And whereas uh, when we talk about labors, so uh, they will get uh, a certain security regarding their employment, and uh, the companies have to you know uh, provide them uh, certain future security also. India is trying to become a $5 trillion economy by 2024-25 uh, fiscal year. And that is going to take some big reforms in land laws. Because uh, to set up industry, uh, to set up factories, it is, the land is uh, the most important asset that is needed uh, at the very beginning of the any uh, inception of any project. So land reforms are going to play a major role in India India's five trillion uh, uh, dream. 
now i'm going to talk about the history of land acquisition acts in india uh the first land acquisition act came in 1894 which was during the british rule in india uh there were several problems with this particular act uh, there was no appeal mechanism uh for the uh, land owners uh there was no uh, provision regarding the resettlement and rehabilitation of the land owners and uh, there was uh, there was this clause urgency clause which uh, which meant that uh, the land acquisition was left to the discretion of the authorities which means uh, if they want to acquire a land they can acquire a land without any uh, you know even if the uh, land owner resists the acquisition they have no uh, you know stay in that particular uh, situation this is the biggest issue with the archaic or old land acquisition law uh, in uh, uh, of 1980 uh, 1894 to change this particular situation the government of india came up with the land acquisition rehabilitation and resettlement act 2013 it was the first post independence uh, land acquisition act in india it tried to change the uh, you know the conditions the the uh, the problems that are there Uh, that were there for the for the land owners uh, you know so this to some extent liberal, uh, liberalized the pro- entire process of uh, land acquisition the lrr act 2013 came up with the four step process uh, for land acquisition the first step is social impact assessment survey the second uh, one is preliminary um, declaration for intent of uh, land acquisition the second one is declaration of the land acquisition the fourth one is the compensation to the land owners the lrr act 2013 also simplified the entire compensation mechanism uh, it has two different categories the first one is for, for rural area land acquisition the second one is the urban area land acquisition in the first one when uh, there is a land acquired in the rural area uh, the farmers are provided four times the market value of the uh, land value uh this in the urban area two times the market value of the land is provided to the land owner so this uh, in this way it provide uh, it actually uh, simplified the compensation mechanism this act also mandates uh, at least uh, consent of at least 70% of the land owners in a public private partnership type of projects and at least 80% uh, consent of at least 80% of the land owners in terms of uh, private projects some exemptions are also provided uh, in the lrr uh, 2013 act uh, to certain industries um, there are 16 uh, acts of such kind which provide exemptions such as uh, special economic zone act 2005 the atomic energy act and uh, the railways act etc the government of india came up with the with an amendment bill in 2015 to change certain um clauses in the uh, land acquisition rehabilitation and resettlement act 2013 uh, it created five different sectors uh, first one is defense rural uh, infrastructure affordable housing industrial corridors and infrastructure products so in this these five categories there will be certain exemption provided to the companies which are, which uh, which will uh, you know uh, cre- uh, install their products in these five areas the motto behind the changes in the land acquisition rehabilitation and resettlement act 2013 is uh, to make the entire process of uh, land acquisition easier for these five industries these five sectors will provide job opportunities for the youths of the nation and uh, the fact that uh, more than 10 million people uh, enter the job market every year in india which means the government and the industries need to create more and more jobs for the indian youth uh, also the fact that uh, the indian industries create somewhere around 26% of the uh, gdp uh, that means we need to uh, and this number is uh, falling since uh, 29 uh, 2009 and 2010 and so we need to grow this proportion of 26% uh, to somewhere around 33 35% so that we can create uh, enough jobs for the indian youth in uh, upcoming years also this uh, the growth in the industry uh, and manufacturing sector will um, dovetail the india's 
target of uh, being a becoming a five trillion dollar economy by 2024 25 thank you